Hey everybody. As you can see here, I'm just finishing up painting the bumper covers front and rear. Uh, in this shot, I'm just touching up the rear bumper where I found a spot that I didn't have uh, full coverage and just trying to blend it back in. Uh, I didn't show you the whole painting process. Uh, mostly I was worried about my camera and I didn't have a good protection for overspray. But it seemed that my booth was doing pretty well, so on the, at the very end here I set it up and we're near where the air comes in. And uh, thought I'd show you. Uh, the gun performed very well. It's the, the DeVilbus um, GPG. My Breathe Cool hood. Man, this is really nice because it's pumping fresh air, cool air in. And uh, it was very comfortable spraying in that. And my fan uh, is in the back uh, door uh, pulling the overspray out, and it seems to be working pretty well. So at this point, you can see that I'm just kind of checking over the parts to make sure I got everything covered. And then we'll go, to, go in and look at the parts a little harder. Uh, the color here uh, is a little, looks a little off at times. It's a combination of lighting because I've got, I've got fluorescent lights on the ceiling. When I get going here, I get halogen lights, and they have a little different color temperature. And then I've got LED lights, and between the three, you kind of get um, uh, quite a variety of colors. I've compared it on a paint stick, and uh, that appears that it should match. Uh, I had it right up against the main part of the car. I am spraying single stage, two part urethane, no clear coat. And that's because the car itself uh, is not clear coated. So I asked the paint shop to give me a single stage that would uh, match up to the factory paint. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm not ready to repaint the whole car at this stage. So from here, I'm gonna move into uh, spraying the two-tone parts, the, uh, the black around the headlights, and I'll show you the results of how things came out. Well, I've spent the last hour and a half or two hours here masking off the front end, and I think I'm pretty much there. Um, the tough part is that you've got these tight curves to make, and I actually took half inch tape and cut it cut it down to quarter inch tape to make these corners and that's why there's a couple extra layers here is you know I've only got a quarter inch so I've overlapped it with others to get the masking paper on it and so forth and pushed it all down real solid but I'm about ready to spray the uh, semi-gloss black in those areas and I've been just very very careful to try to um, mask it the same so that it'll look the same as the factory had it uh, some of these things are um, a little bit of a challenge, but but uh, on these the the black is on the flat, and when it started to roll into a curve is where the red picked up. So that's where I where I took it. So in a few minutes, this is another one of those where I I just. Uh, you're not going to watch me paint because I've got too many things to do and i got to get, keep the camera out of the painting zone. I'm going to fire up my blower and get my respirator on, um, degrease this one more time, uh, tack it, uh, tack cloth it, and then, uh, and then I'll spray. And this time, this one is a, this is a spray can job. Uh, it's a 2K two-part um, spray max product that uh, was recommended uh, rather than me going through and mixing up a tiny amount of paint to do that. Um, when I did this it was kind of uh, difficult to decide you know do you do the red first or the black first or where do you split it uh, particularly because I had done a major repair here and I got primer in this whole area but it looked like the conventional standard method is to go ahead and paint the entire part and then come back and cut in and do the second color. So when I sprayed up here, you can even see there's a little bit of black showing through. Um, it is red, but I tried to not get too heavy a coat of red on there so that we, you know, so I just don't get uh, an excessive amount of paint. 
Uh, we'll see how the black does. It, it ought to cover pretty well and and we'll we'll go in from there and otherwise I think I'm pretty well set. I'm going to get my halogen lights out of here because they're not explosion proof. Those suckers are pretty hot and uh, anyway just thought I would show you show you that before I go at it and uh, it's long long about midnight so I'm going to try to get this done hopefully it's two coats and uh, probably with a ten or so minute flash in between and then I'm going to go get some sleep because I've been uh, working on painting since about uh, six o'clock this morning well I finished last night spraying the black uh, on, the, on the nose piece so I think I'm going to untape it now and see uh, how it turned out Biggest fear, of course, is damaging either of the, either of the new paints. I waited almost 12 hours to to do the second coat. So far, you know, I'm not going to say. I pushed and pushed and pushed and worked really hard to get make sure that this tape had a good um, a good bond to the surface, so that the paint wouldn't creep underneath. And, and so far, I'd say it's pretty good. There's a couple spots where there's just a little bit of roughness on the edge, but overall not bad. Okay, that looks pretty good. The trick with doing this is knowing where to put the tape and the factory, you know, there's a curve on here, and the factory did not paint around the curve. They stayed on the flap all the way around. And even on this side, um, it's well around the curve, kind of because it starts underneath here and then runs down. And I, like I say, I, what I said last night was I, um, I was trying to follow as close as I could the original factory lines of how they laid things out. So, hey, I'm pretty happy with that. Now well, let's um, go over here to the other side and see what that looks like. I've seen recommendations for when you're masking that you should put the paper on first and then try to mask up to the edge. Um, I think sometimes that works, but frankly, um, in this particular case, it was easier for me to get the get the edge fixed up, know where the edge needed to be, and then I put my paper up against it. Just because of the amount of um, work required here on the corners. Not sure how the factory managed to do this uh, in a production 
way and get it precise because it's a you must have had a very good uh, jig or something to follow that yes, there's a few spots there where it bled just a hair but so far There. It's really, it's really pretty doggone clean. You just got a couple spots where it got under the edge of the tape just a little, but we're talking minuscule, minuscule. Ah, looks nice. Let's untape the rest of it. So I really don't want this tape to stay on there that, you know, too long. Some of you might ask, well, gee, why'd you paint, why'd you tape that and not just paint it? Why'd you spend all the time masking it off? And, uh, the answer to that is that, you know, everything had to be roughed up and deglossed and cleaned very carefully. And, and it just, uh, it just seemed to me that with all the little details and stuff around the bolt holes, none of this is visible when the car is assembled. So, my logic was to just go ahead and mask it, it was less time, it would be never, you know, nobody was ever going to see it, even this nobody was going to see, but I finally broke down and said, eh, let's, let's rough it, um, you know, I had to scuff everything with 400 or scotch Bright equivalent. But it was just less to worry about. Looks pretty darn good. There's only one disappointment on this piece. I may have showed this earlier, but I have one piece to work on, and I think I can do it. But in my spraying on this part, you know, it really turned out pretty well. It's got a lot of gloss, everything came up. There's a run right here. I got a little bit of a sag and then a, a little bit of a run. Knowing that it's a, not a metallic, it's a solid color and I can sand on it, I'm going to have to come back with very, very fine sandpaper and work that out and polish it out. But I think I, think I can salvage that um, without having to re, repaint. It's, it's not a horrible run, but it's still a run, and I need to fix it. It was kind of really disappointing, but the challenge when you're doing these parts is that you're, you know, I had to spray down the back to get the edge, and I had to spray over this way to get the edge, and then I had to come and, and go back and forth across, and um, I just put it on just a little bit too heavy up on that corner. And it's a, yeah, it's a mistake of being out of practice. It's been years since I painted a car. So these paints have their own challenges. And, uh, you know, that one, unfortunately, I have an imperfection I have to fix. It's fairly small, but I want, I'm going to want to make sure it gets taken care of. That's the only flaw I've found on this part so far. 
the uh, lower spoiler or the lower fascia and you can kind of see there in the reflection I got a spot here where I got a, a number of runs and actually over to this side I got a couple more and again it's the the cause is the same it's you have to spray up underneath to get the the corner you have to spray down on top to get the top edges here and then you need to make a pass and I knew you can see over on the wall where I was testing spray patterns what I was trying to do was get a narrow straight spray pattern down there on the my, my normal spray pattern was big and I was working to get down to a smaller one so I wasn't just spraying paint all over the room and then at the same time dial back the fluid so that I wasn't spraying as much fluid when I put it on I'll say this is when I put it on when I finished the coat and walked away this looked great when I uh, set the gun down and came back you know ten minutes later I was horrified to see that uh, in that time that it had sagged and run so this is another one where I'm going to be trying to see if I can fix that worst case scenario it's not a huge part um, I can color sand and I've got very very fine grits down to 3000 and uh, the trick is to sand the run and not the rest of the paint and if I go through um, I'll uh, I'll smooth it out and I'll load the gun up with a another run and I'll take one more shot at it and make sure that this one comes out the rear bumper turned out great it doesn't have any flaws in it at all so so we shall see